Okay, so have you ever wondered how technology can actually help a heartbeat in sync? Mm. Today we're taking a deep dive into biventricular pacemakers. Fascinating little devices. They are fascinating. Yeah. They're these special pacemakers that are used to treat heart failure. Right. And they help the ventricles pump blood more effectively. Yeah. It, it's really incredible how they can step in when the heart isn't quite doing its job as well as it should. Yeah. So we're going to explore the procedure, the benefits, and the risks. All the things you need to know. Yeah. Drawing on information from um, uh, medical sources that we've been looking at. Absolutely. But how does this thing actually work? It uses electrical pulses to synchronize the ventricles. Okay. You know, making sure they're beating together in harmony. In sync. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not just one pulse, so it's got three leads. Oh. Each one goes to a specific part of the heart. So, like, where do they go? One goes to the right atrium. Okay. One to the right ventricle. Huh. And the third one goes to a vein that's outside the left ventricle. So it's really kind of surrounding the whole heart to get it all working together. Exactly. It's about getting that synchronization just right. Yeah. And sometimes... Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, this is really cool. Sometimes it's combined with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. ICD. ICD, that's right. So what's that do? That's like a safety net. Okay. It prevents dangerously fast heart rhythms. Okay. Which could lead to sudden cardiac arrest. Like a backup generator almost. Yeah, exactly. Like a backup system just in case. That's amazing. So it's a pretty powerful combination. Yeah, so when people hear pacemaker, they think major surgery. Right. But it's not. It's actually considered a minor surgery. Really? Yeah, and most people only stay in the hospital overnight. Okay. So what they do is they make a small incision in the chest. Okay. And they thread the leads through a vein to reach the heart. Uh -huh. Then they connect those leads to the pacemaker itself mm -hmm. and they program it to fit the patient's needs. That's incredible. So you might see like a little bump under your skin where it is. You might, yeah. But it's a small price to pay for a heart that's beating in sync. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Right. Okay, so once it's in this, are there things people need to be cautious about day to day? That's a good question. Yeah. And an important one to consider. Yeah. You know, when you're making decisions, uh, so certain electrical devices with strong electromagnetic fields, okay. those can interfere with the pacemaker. So, like, what kind of things are we talking about? Like powerful magnets, industrial equipment. Okay, so, like, you can't go work in a power plant or something. Probably not a great idea to be around those really strong magnetic fields. Yeah, okay. But it's really important to talk to your doctor okay. about specific devices to avoid okay. and how far away you need to stay from them. Okay. The good news is most common household appliances, okay. electronics in your office, those are all perfectly safe. That's good, so you don't have to completely change your life. No, not at all. Okay, that's good to know. So why would someone need one of these in the first place? One of the most common reasons is heart failure. Okay. This happens when the heart's ventricles aren't pumping enough blood. Okay. Sometimes this is caused by problems with the heart's electrical system. Okay. That's where a pacemaker can really help. So to decide if a biventricular pacemaker is the right way to go, what do doctors look at? Well, they look at a few different things. Okay. They assess how severe the patient's symptoms are, uh -huh. they look at their ejection fraction. Okay, what's that? That measures how much blood the left ventricle pumps out with each beat. Oh, okay. And they also look at the heart's electrical system. To see if it's working properly. Exactly how well is it functioning. Yeah, okay, so it's not a one-size-fits-all thing? No, not at all. It's very personalized. Yeah. It's about finding the best solution for each individual. Right, and the patient understand the benefits and risks involved in that decision making. That's crucial. Yeah. Okay. So how effective are these things actually? They can be really effective. Okay. They can significantly improve blood flow, huh. which can lead to a lot of positive changes. Like right. what? People often report feeling better, having more energy, okay. fewer hospitalizations, oh, wow. and there's even more. Oh. Yeah. There was a study that showed that fewer people with pacemakers uh -huh. were hospitalized for heart failure compared to those who just relied on medication. Wow, so it's actually doing something, it's not just masking the problem. It's not just masking the symptoms, yeah. it can actually slow down the progression of heart failure Oh wow! by helping the heart's electrical system work better. Okay. And in some cases, it can even help the left ventricle return to a more normal size. Wow, that's incredible. So it's not just a temporary fix, it can have long-term benefits. So it's actually helping your heart get healthier. Exactly. It's giving it the support it needs to function better. What about combining it with an ICD? Does that offer any extra advantages? 
that can be a really powerful combination. Okay. Studies have shown that it can lead to even longer life expectancy. Wow. And further reduce the chances of being hospitalized for heart failure. Okay. So for some people, it's like double the peace of mind. Double the peace of mind. Knowing they have this robust system working to keep their heart healthy. Okay, so we talked about how they work the procedure, right. the benefits. Right. But what about the risks? Of course we have to talk about the risks. Yeah. It's important to be upfront about the potential risks yeah. with any medical procedure. And yeah. these risks can vary from person to person. So what kind of things should people be aware of? Well, during and right after the procedure, there's a possibility of some pain, okay. bleeding, bruising around the incision site. Makes sense. There's also a small risk of a collapsed lung. Okay. That's medically known as pneumothorax. Yeah, those all sound like typical surgical risks. They are, and the good news is they don't happen very often. Okay, good. Our research indicates that a collapsed lung occurs in about one out of every 100 cases. Okay. And overall complications during or after the procedure are estimated to happen in about four out of 100 cases. Okay, so not very common. No, not very common at all. But what about long-term risks? Are there any concerns there? There are a couple potential long-term risks to consider. Like what? Infection near the pacemaker site. Yeah. Or a malfunction of the device or leads. How often does that happen? Thankfully, not very often. Okay. Research suggests that infection occurs in about one out of 100 cases. Okay. And when it comes to the pacemaker or leads malfunctioning, that's estimated to happen within a year of implantation in roughly five to seven out of 100 cases. Okay, so it's not something people should really be losing sleep over. Exactly. Okay. And regular checkups with your doctor are really important. Makes sense. They can monitor the pacemaker's function, okay. catch any potential issues early on, just give you peace of mind. Yeah, like getting your car checked regularly. Exactly. Yeah, preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance, that's a great analogy. Yeah, so it sounds like it's all about minimizing those risks and maximizing the benefits. It really is. Of this potentially life-changing technology. Absolutely. That's great. So it sounds like for people struggling with certain heart conditions, yeah. it can really lead to a much better quality of life. It can, for sure. That's great. It's amazing how technology can have such a positive impact. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. On people's lives. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it really is remarkable how it can give people that freedom back. Yeah, like a new lease on life, almost. Absolutely. So we talked about how it works, the procedure, the benefits the risks, those regular checkups, and making yeah. sure it's all running smoothly. Keeping things in check. Yeah, and it can really improve their quality of life. It really can. And even extend their lifespan, potentially. Potentially, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, making a decision about getting one of these mm -hmm. isn't just about understanding how it works. Right. It's about weighing the potential benefits against the risks. Absolutely. And yeah. what matters most to the individual. It's a personal journey. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, for sure. It's about finding what's right for you. And having that open communication with your doctor. Absolutely essential. To really understand if this is the right choice. You need to feel comfortable expressing your concerns, mm -hmm. your hopes, yeah. your fears, everything. It's a partnership. It is a partnership. Not just following orders. Exactly. It's about shared decision making. Yeah. Where you feel heard and respected. Right. You wouldn't buy a car without understanding how it works. Yeah, that's a good point. So why would you make a decision about your health without understanding? Yeah, for sure. What are some questions you would recommend people ask their doctors? Well, first, you want to understand the potential benefits that you personally might experience with a pacemaker. Okay. And then delve into the potential risks and complications ah. that are specific to your case. Okay. Ask about how a pacemaker might affect your daily life. Yeah, like what kind of changes you need to make. Exactly. What changes will you need to make? Yeah. What about follow-up care? Okay. And perhaps most importantly, ask about alternatives to a pacemaker. Okay. What are the other options? And what those might look like for so you. So it's about having all the information. Yeah. Arming yourself with knowledge. Absolutely. So you feel confident in whatever decision you make. It's about making an informed choice. Yeah. And it's not just about the technology itself. Right. It's about how it fits into the bigger picture. It's about your overall health and well-being. Yeah, exactly. Are there things that people can do oh, absolutely. to support their heart health, Yeah. whether or not they have a pacemaker? Yeah, regardless of whether you have a pacemaker or not. Things that our listeners can start doing today. Absolutely. Lifestyle choices play a huge role in cardiovascular health. Like what? 
Well, a balanced diet is key. So eating the good stuff. Eating the good stuff, lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Okay. Regular exercise. Okay. It doesn't have to be intense. Just get moving. Just get moving. Yeah. Even moderate activity can make a big difference. Okay. And of course, avoiding smoking. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a huge one. So we actually have a lot of control. We do. Over our own heart health. We're not just passive bystanders. Yeah. We can actively participate in our own well-being. I like that. And for people considering a pacemaker, having yeah. that mindset yeah. can be incredibly valuable. It's about taking ownership of your health. Not just relying on technology. Exactly. It's a two-pronged approach. Technology and lifestyle working together. Working in harmony. I like that. And speaking of that shared decision-making yeah. between the patient and their doctor, mm -hmm. can you expand on that a bit more? I think it's really important for our listeners to understand that. Absolutely. So in the past, medical decisions were often made in a very paternalistic way. Okay. The doctor decided and the patient followed. Like doctor knows best. Exactly. But... Thankfully, things are changing. Good. We recognize how crucial patient autonomy is. Yeah. It's about empowering people to make informed choices about their own bodies. So it's less about doctor knows best. Right. And more about working together. It's a collaboration. Yeah. To find what works best for you. Exactly. And it involves open and honest conversations. Yeah. The doctor explains the risks and benefits of various treatments. Uh -huh. The patient shares their values, their preferences, their goals. Okay. And together they come up with a plan. So it's a two-way street. It is a two-way street. With information flowing both ways. Absolutely. That's the ideal scenario. Yeah. And I imagine that leads to better outcomes. It often does. Because yeah. when patients are involved in the decision-making, yeah. they're more likely to be engaged in their treatment. Right. They feel a sense of ownership. And feel more in control of their health. Exactly. That feeling of control can be so powerful. Especially when you're dealing with something as important as your heart. Absolutely. It fosters trust yeah. and yeah. builds a stronger partnership between the patient and their healthcare team. And that trust can make all the difference. It can. When you're facing a complex decision. For sure. Like whether or not to get a pacemaker. Couldn't agree more. It's about feeling supported. Yes. And confident in the choices that you make. It's about feeling like you're in the driver's seat. Of your own health journey. Exactly. And isn't that what really matters at the end of the day? I think so. Feeling empowered to make the best choices for ourselves. That's what patient-centered care is all about. Very well said. Thank you. This has been a really insightful conversation. It has been. We've covered so much yeah. from the technical details right. to the personal considerations involved in making a decision. Absolutely. It's a complex topic. It is. But I think we've shed some light on it. Yeah, I think so too. It really is. And you know, it makes me wonder what the future holds. Yeah, where's all this going? Exactly what's next for heart health technology. Well, researchers and innovators are constantly exploring mm -hmm. new frontiers in this field. So what's on the horizon? Well, one area that's really exciting is the development of even smaller, okay. more sophisticated pacemakers. Like how small are we talking? Imagine devices that are practically invisible. Wow. Implanted with minimally invasive procedures. Oh, even less noticeable than that little bump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And these next generation pacemakers could have advanced sensors okay. that constantly monitor the heart's activity. So it's like a 24-7 personal trainer for your heart. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Constantly monitoring, making adjustments as needed. Wow, that's incredible. And that's not all. There's more. There's more. We're also seeing progress in the leadless pacemaker. Leadless. Leadless. So no wires at all. You got it. Wow. These tiny devices are implanted directly into the heart chamber, yeah. eliminating the need for leads completely. Wow. What are the advantages of that? Well, for starters, it reduces the risk of complications okay. that can arise from leads like infections or fractures. Okay. It also simplifies the implantation procedure. Making it even less invasive. Exactly. Wow. So less risk easier procedure. Wider outcomes, hopefully. It's amazing. What about other areas of heart health? Yeah. What other advancements are scientists working on? One really fascinating area is using stem cells. Stem cells. Yeah. To repair damaged heart tissue. Exactly. I've heard about that. How would that work? 
Scientists are exploring ways to use stem cells yes. to actually regenerate healthy heart muscle cells. Wow. So it's like giving the heart a chance to heal itself. It is. It's like hitting the reset button. From the inside out. Exactly. And while this research is still in its early stages, yeah. it holds immense promise for the future. That's incredible. So we've got smaller, smarter pacemakers. Strong. Stem cell therapy. Right. What can we do now to keep our hearts healthy? That's the most important question. Yeah. Because it's about taking care of our hearts every single day. It's not just about reacting when there's a problem. Exactly. It's about being proactive. Absolutely. And making healthy choices. So even with all this amazing technology, yeah. we can't forget about those simple everyday habits. That makes such a big difference. Things like eating a nutritious diet. Yeah. Getting regular exercise, managing stress, getting enough sleep. It sounds like a recipe for a good life in general. It really is. Not just heart health. It's about taking ownership of our well-being. Yeah. Making choices that serve us well in the long run. And it's never too late to start. Absolutely. Every step counts. So no matter how small the change. It's a step in the right direction. That's a great note to end on. And that's your deep dive for today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Until next time. Keep those questions coming. Yes. And keep those hearts healthy.